President Obama turns 50 today. He got a little jump on his birthday celebration last night at a fundraiser in Chicago. Happy birthday to you. 2,400 supporters led by Jennifer Hudson, as you saw there, singing happy birthday to the president, who well, apparently enjoyed it. I could not have a better early birthday present than spending tonight with all of you. I love you back. The president's doctors say the 50-year-old is in good shape, but as we mentioned earlier, he does have more gray hair than he <laughs> used to, tends to be a, sort of a casualty of the office. That got us to thinking, do presidents actually age more quickly than the average American? But joining us now is Dr. Michael Roizen, the chief wellness officer at the Cleveland Clinic, and he has studied presidents going way back to 1901. Doc, good morning. Good to see you here this morning. It's great to be here. So you say that while in office, you age twice as fast. Right. For every year they're in office, all the way from Teddy Roosevelt to now, yeah. they age two years for every year they're in office. And is it just the stress? Is that the leading indicator? Well, the stress is the leading reason, but the, we all have stress. So you have stress, Erica has stress, but we manage it with friends. They lose all their friends. Even their wives, by the end of their term, are asking them for favors. Can you do this? Can you do that? And so they end up with no one who's giving them unrequited love except for the pets. Well, don't you, not only unrequited love, but also sort of that sounding board, just, uh, just a person who's always in your corner to give you a little break. That's right. So that's what we, the rest of us, have that, that ameliorates stress. And they have huge amounts of stress, obviously. But you saw in the last debate, right, the president loses even his friends. They're criticizing him. And so what do you do? I mean, you're, you're, you feel like you've got the stress. You do have the stress of the world on you, and you have nothing to ameliorate it. So Teddy Roosevelt, gained a lot of weight, had heart disease. And if you look at it, it, every one of them develops high blood pressure or heart disease or aging of the arteries. Clinton has it too. It's a real incentive to run for office, isn't it? <laughs> well, you'd say, why are these eight guys running on the other side, right? I mean, it's, a very, it's a very tough job. They get such great medical care while in office. Do they just not exercise the option to, well, to well, make sure that they're being well they, maintained? They, the best medical care can't replace friends. They have a purpose in life, which helps them, obviously. They have a driving force. Yeah. But they realize how tough it is to get their mission done. And so then they, they end up with, they, most of them will exercise. Most of them will eat reasonably. Although you showed, uh, if you will, um, Teddy Roosevelt, who, who went from like, 210 pounds yeah. to 340. Yeah, Bill, Clinton. Um, Bill Clinton, all of them gain weight, usually, don't eat as well and they really end up with uh, arterial disease. They can reverse it, though, as, as we've seen in many cases. President Clinton may be a good example. Once they leave. Looking a little bit better now out of office, so probably helps once the stress has gone. Dr. Right. All of us get to reverse it. That's the great thing about aging. We get to change it if we take And And that's why he's on the Esselstyn diet. He's wow. gone on and changed his diet radically, and he's getting more friends. All right. Well, maybe you should send a note to this president for his birthday, a little advice. Dr. Royce, nice, nice to have time. you with us. Thanks.